Hi, I'm Alan Cowley, a physiologist from the Medical College of Wisconsin, and I've been asked by the Editor-in-Chief of uh, Physiological Genomics, Andy Green, um, to give a little of the history of what, what led up to the formation of this journal, uh, and what we thought it might do, how it's progressed, and, and where I think it may be going. So, I'll take you back to the uh, year of 1997, and I was coming in as the president of the American Physiological Society, and it was a time when um, we were hoping we were going to be able to sequence the human genome. There was a great deal of excitement and debate, um, and, and not uh, necessarily enthusiasm about this whole project amongst the physiological community because of great diversion of NIH dollars toward this project, um, a project uh, which nobody really had a clear idea what would bring to the playing field of physiology. And this was the science of the moment, and I decided it was time for the American Physiological Society to engage in this, in this debate. So one of the first things I did um, even as president-elect of the society, was convince the, uh, the powers to be within the society, the executive committee in particular, that we should have a conference, that the APS should, should sponsor a conference which brought together uh, academics, industry, and government uh, experts in the area of genomics and physiology uh, to sort of chart the future of where all this might be going. And this turned quickly into uh, the Banbury Conference. The Banbury Conference Center is part of the Cold Spring Harbor uh, operation and the center and the home of, of uh, genetics. It seemed like an appropriate place for the meeting. Uh, the great Nobel laureate Jim Watson introduced uh, our meeting for us. And uh, we locked up for two days and, and brainstormed about how this all may occur. Well, we can see how it's unraveled and, or, or developed over the last decade, but at that point it, it wasn't at all clear what needed to be done and, and how physiology should actually engage in all of this. Uh, a lot of terrific recommendations came from that meeting. One of them is related to the importance of, of having a, a way in which we could uh, collectively communicate between uh, the, the genomic community and, and the people that would study the effects of all these uh, newly identified and discovered genes. So it's from this uh, thought uh, which emerged the idea of a journal and the idea that the American Physiological Society in fact would take a lead role in trying to bridge this very difficult gap, which still remains, uh, between gene sequence uh, and complex function. And not shortly thereafter, uh, the International Union of Physiological Science, Sciences was meeting in St. Petersburg, Russia, and Marty Frank, the executive director of the APS, and I were, were wandering around the bookstalls uh, at that meeting. and. Uh, we saw a journal entitled Functional Genomics, uh, published in England. I don't remember the name of the publisher. It no longer exists. But we saw this journal and it immediately uh, occurred to us as we uh, both had the idea, I think simultaneously, we just looked at each other and said, voila, uh, this is clearly what the APS should be doing. We need to to launch a journal. And I felt strongly that we wanted to keep the name physiology in it. And we needed genomics, so it became physiological genomics. And we convinced uh, the council of the APS that this was something worth investing in. Uh, it was clear at the time that this was uh, ahead of its time. Uh, microarrays were barely on the horizon human genome hadn't been sequenced yet. Uh, bioinformatics uh, 
was not a developed field. It didn't even have a name at that time. Uh, we knew there was going to be an enormous amount of, of informational, computational, genomic, and huge amount of phenotyping that needed to be done. Uh, it was pretty clear to uh, people that could see where this was going that physiology had to be uh, a primary part of this. A gene without a function was not a very useful sort of a biological vision. So physiology and, and the function, functionation of the genome really became uh, the goal of all this. And this became the first uh, journal dedicated to bringing these two areas together. And it's been supported mightily by the American Physiological Society uh, through many years of financial loss. And has now grown into a very solid journal. The first editor-in-chief was uh, Dr. Victor Zhao, who was at Harvard at that time. We thought if we placed the editorship in the center of of uh, one of the major genome areas, um, MIT and Harvard, that we could give this uh, journal a good jump start, and it did. Um, and then it, the second editorship for two, two terms fell into my hands, um, and we had a lot of the associate editors located here at the Medical College of Wisconsin, and we tried to uh, develop uh, a broadening interest physiological world about applying all of these technologies and getting involved, and, and this has occurred. And it's occurred to a remarkable degree in many different areas of physiology, and you'll now see many of these technologies applied uh, and, and published in many of the other journals of the society, in fact, uh, the cardiovascular journal and the GI and the, neuro and the neurosciences and so on are all using the, these various techniques. The pride of this journal is that it's been the leading edge of all the development and thinking in this, in this area and remains that. It remains a place where one can, can bring new approaches uh, to connect and function in the genome and now to layer in proteomics and metabolomics and the integration uh, of all these complex layers of the uh, biological system. So I think the journal has served uh, not only the American Physiological Society well, but, but uh, it, it filled a very important niche. It was initiated at the right time, I think at the right place. Uh, the vision of the people that were involved in um, moving this journal forward, and there were many of them, too many to, to mention uh, in this short clip. But it is moving forward. I think the science of physiological genomics and systems biology, uh, because it's all melded into the same, same area of need, uh, of integration of the two, uh, has been a tremendous uh, success. This is the future of physiology, I strongly believe, and it's the future of biomedical sciences. It's serving as the cornerstone for the translation of basic mechanisms into complex diseases, and I think we've just begun to see where all this is taking us. It's an exciting uh, field, and I must say I have been just delighted to have been a part of it, and I thank you.